Hey guys, welcome to the first video that we have in the ALP Gear Closet series. Uh, what I want to do today is I want to take you through everything that's in my bag on a wedding day. The tools that I choose to use, I'm using them because it helps me to be a better storyteller. Uh, I'm going to take you through everything that I have with me and I'm going to talk a little bit about why it matters. <laughs> First thing to do is to probably talk about the cameras that I use. Uh, I use Sony. I've been a Sony shooter forever, always have been. It's literally what I learned photography on. Uh, these um, have been really, really great cameras. Uh, autofocus is just blazing fast. Um, the newest generation of Sony cameras have incredible color. Um, and so the things that I'm able to do uh, from a creative storyteller vantage point, um, I'm sure I could achieve it with any kind of Canon or Nikon camera for sure, but um, Sony is my poison of choice. This is the Sony A1. I also have an A92 that I use with me, uh, and then an A7 III that I carry just kind of as a backup. Now for lens choices, really the three that you see right here, these three lenses is pretty much all I use on the wedding day, okay? One camera that I have on my left side is usually, uh, usually has the uh, 35 millimeter 1.8. Uh, this is a Sony lens. It's a mirrorless lens, the FE 1.8 35 millimeters. This lens is just absolutely incredible. It is a prime, which means that it's a fixed focal length. There's no zoom here. All the zooming is pretty much done by moving forward towards your subject and moving away from your subject. Um, but this thing is super, super fast. Autofocus is blazing fast. Never had any problems with it. I love how, what it does to images and how it renders images. Just absolutely stunning and beautiful. The thing I want to uh, bring it to your attention is I love prime lenses. Uh, I do really most of all my work on the prime lenses. And the reason that I choose that is because in my experience, when I have a moment that's presented to me, there's something that's unfolding in front of me and I've got to be on it and I got to shoot through the arc of that moment. It's way easier for me to be able to know in my mind's eye what does that composition look like at 35 millimeters? And what is that composition gonna look like at 85 or 90 millimeters? And I've got those two choices. And that's gonna allow me to frame my composition much more effectively. I found that I, my, my effectiveness as a storyteller shot through the roof when I started using primes for that very simple reason. I, you know, if I were to carry a bunch of zooms with me, sure, that would give me a lot of possibilities. And a lot of people think that Possi having more possibilities is a good thing. But to me, I find that the greatest creativity is found through limiting your choices, is found through having a few options and then you working with those few options to create the best outcome that you possibly can. That's why I love using primes. So the first prime that I'll have on one camera on my left side would be the FE35. Now the other lens that I choose to have on my right side is the FE35. Uh, 90 millimeter. This is a macro lens. This is Sony's mirrorless macro lens. Uh, this is at 2.8, so it's uh, wide open. I can use it in almost any scenario. But it's amazing. Like this thing is an amazing portrait lens. It's in that great portrait range between like 85 and 100 millimeters. So it's in that range. But it's also a macro lens, so I'm able to also get detail shots with it. Um, I'm never scared to use this pretty much in any scenario that's needed when when it comes to that kind of thing. Also, just like an incredibly sharp lens. Very sharp. Beautifully renders, color, uh, beautifully renders the images, um, and it's just an all-around fantastic lens. All day long, the entire wedding day, it's this and this, up and to the reception. Um, and that's really how I shoot. Getting ready is one camera has this on it, one camera has this on it. Um, the ceremony itself, same way. Portraits, same way. Uh, the uh, family portraits, same way. Every part of the wedding day is really just these two lenses the entire time through. Um, this creates enough diversity and depth to the photographs that um, I've never found that I wanted more choices than this. This is exactly what I love. Now, when it comes to the reception, that's very, very different. When it comes to the reception, I have with me here a 16 to 35, uh, 2.8. So this is a fantastic lens. It, it's, it's really, really incredible. I use it for the reception for this reason. I really want something really, really wide. 
that's a part of what sets my reception photography apart. The ability to get in the middle of the dancing, to get up in that, in that action, and to be able to pretty, and pretty much what I do is I lock this at 16 millimeters, as wide as it'll possibly go, I open it up all the way to 2.8, and then I use off-camera lighting. That's how I really get those dynamic, uh, interesting, emotive dancing photographs. Like that's, you know, at the end of the day, I, there's a lot of photographers who will take a reception, they'll approach it and they'll, you know, put on a longer lens and they'll shoot the action from the outside and that's, that's fine, but there is a difference between being outside the action shooting in and being inside the action and shooting up or shooting down. Uh, really feeling the entire frame, getting, opening up, you know, putting it all the way at 16 millimeters, getting as close to the subject as you possibly can, and it's gonna fill the, the frame up with that subject. It makes you feel like you're there. It makes you feel like you're feeling the sweat dripping off the forehead of the person dancing in front of you. It really creates an emotional connection with what you're seeing. It makes it feel like you were there. And I tell my couples this all the time, um, is that when I'm shooting on the wedding day, I'm constantly thinking about how can I tell this story in a way that when their kids are looking at those photographs or looking through that album in 20 years, I want their kids, I want their children to feel like that they were there at that wedding, that they were there at that reception, that they can, you know, feel the music thumping through their chest. I think that that's, I think that that's a very powerful thing that we can create for the couples that we work for and that we serve. Um, and to me, dynamic lighting through off-camera flash, you know, having a very, very wide, um, a, a lens like the 16 to 35 where you can shoot super wide and also be able to shoot wide open at 2.8, it allows you to be able to achieve that kind of look. A um, couple of the things that I always have with me, obviously spare batteries, it's super important. I found with the newest generation of Sony cameras, um, typically I'll t have like four batteries with me and that gets me through the entire wedding day uh, with ease. Obviously a case to keep cards in and to keep everything organized is really important. Um, the strap is basically, it's kind of like the, the hold fast money maker, uh, is an important uh, tool for me to have so that I can have both cameras on me at all times. That's what I use. I found it to be most comfortable and, and to, uh, to really allow me to do uh, what I want to do. I also carry with me a drone, so obviously if I was shooting video, this would become a much more essential piece of gear. But I will say, I always stick it in my bag either way. These things are incredibly compact and tiny, easy to carry. It's not like they used to be. And every so often, I always, you know, I go to a venue and I'm always thinking to myself, how can I do something unique or different? How can I create an, an interesting story and be able to give something to that couple that they've never seen before? And sometimes that includes shooting a photograph from the air and shooting straight down. So I always keep one with me just in case I need it. Um, this thing is awesome. This thing is uh, created by Impact, um, manufactured by Impact. It's CC102 spring clamp. It is super springy. It's like, it grips really hard. And it's even got these little bumpers on it, these little rubber bumpers, so that you don't damage something that it's gripping. But the possibilities with this thing are endless. So it's got a cold shoe. It, it actually comes with the cold shoe on it so that you're able to stick your flash straight on that cold shoe. And then you can attach this, this clamp almost anywhere. So, you know, if you look through my portfolio and you see like some really dynamic shots of the groom getting ready or the bride getting ready, and you're like, man, like where's, where's the light stand? It's probably that I didn't have a light stand. It's probably that I had the flash on this clamp just like this, and I had that clamped to, you know, the mirror um, or uh, a, a chair that was right next to the bride, anything I can get my hands on to clamp this. What's really amazing about this thing is that it's actually got a ball head with it. So on the ball head, I can actually loosen it and then clamp it however I need to, but then get the flash in whatever position needed in order for me to achieve the look that I'm going for. This thing is incredibly useful. And it's also even got a spot where you can stick it on a stand if you want to, just to be able to have it. I, I, I love this thing. I think this thing, I think I bought it for like 30, 35 bucks. It's like literally one of the most useful tools in my arsenal. And then you can even take the cold shoe off and then use it for all kinds of other things. If you've got a video, like all the time here in the studio, we've got our Zoom recorder that we'll just screw onto this thing and clamp it somewhere and have it you know, off the ground. It's, it's a very useful tool. I highly recommend you picking it up. Um, and then just having a super lightweight light stand. So this one is the Manfrotto 5001B1. This thing is awesome. Just because it's super small, it's super lightweight. Really, honestly, when we walk into the wedding day, um, I've got my bag slung over my shoulder, 
I'm carrying this stand right here, and that's it. Like, there's nothing else. Uh, it allows me to be very modular. I'm able to move without a whole lot of restriction. I never have to stop what I'm doing to go back to a bag and grab something. It's very rare that that ever needs to happen. I want to be able to be as lightweight, as free as I possibly can. And that's one point I want to make here before I move on to the, 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 the lighting is that the choices that I've made as far as, you know, having these small primes and having a, a mirrorless camera and, and the ability that the mirrorless cameras has to like shoot silently, especially the A1. With the A1, you're able to go literally into any lighting scenario and shoot silently and there's no banding, there's no uh, image quality issues. It's it, like they've solved all that with A1. To be able to do that, allows me to be in places that I normally would never be able to be. It allows me to be a little bit more like a ninja on the wedding day, that I'm able to just be um, present with the camera in the action and be able to photograph people's real and genuine emotions and reactions. Because if I'm walking around with a gigantic camera and a gigantic rig, you know, it does make people camera aware. They change how they are reacting to those beautiful moments that occur on the wedding day, like when the niece walks in and she just looks adorable. You know, I have before, when I shot with bigger lenses, you know, I've been in the middle of that trying to make a composition and then I'll see the mother of the bride glance my way. And and she's she like s sits up with a little bit taller posture. And again, she just doesn't look comfortable, but she thinks she's trying to make herself look better for the photos. It just avoids all that, right? If they don't hear the click of the shutter, if, I'm, if I have a very minimal setup with my gear, I'm just not making myself as known and as present um, in the minds of the people who are there in that room as, as I would be with big gear. So that's just something I wanna throw out there. Being a better storyteller sometimes means um, having a more a compact setup that allows me to be freer and allows me to be in the action without being noticed quite as much. All right. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is flash gear. So I've got, uh, this is the Profoto A1. This is the, the flash that I use, the uh, compact flash that I use. I'll use this thing really for most of the day. Um, most of all the portraits that I take, I do get creative, especially in the reception where I use two lights or three lights. But for the most part, you know, for most of the day I'm using one. I will say, the thing that transforms this into a tool that really allows me to be creative is this, it's the grid. So a grid is basically what snaps onto the front of your light and then it allows the light that you see here, it goes from this gigantic floodlight that's spilling light everywhere and, and making light bounce everywhere to uh, moving light through these little honeycomb, uh, honeycombs that's in the grid and it takes the light from spilling everywhere and it narrows that beam, in, it narrows that light down into a beam where that beam is super focused, it's almost like a laser. So when I go like this, if I were to press the button, the light would flash everywhere. Once I put the grid on it, it's only gonna allow that light to shoot forward like a laser beam, right? It allows me to be super creative with how I'm using that light. Um, I love Profoto because the grids just kind of like magnetically, uh, you know, um, uh, snap on, makes the whole system super easy. Before I got into Profoto and I started using this gear, I was using another flash system called a Godox. Um, specifically, I was using Flashpoint, which is Adorama's version of Godox. Um, and I, it is what I learned lighting on. They are great. And the way you solve this problem is with another product called uh, MagMod. They've got these MagMod things that clip on, and then you basically have a grid that can magnetically uh, attach onto the light, so you can basically attach it onto any light that you have. The MagMod and the uh, Godox systems worked really, really well for a long time. It just eventually stopped working correctly, and I did like firmware updates, I reset the batteries and did everything that I know how to do, reset the, the, the system and reset the, the flash and everything that I could think of, everything that I could look up in forums. I did, but I just started having this issue where they wouldn't connect to the controller correctly. They wouldn't fire consistently. Even when they did fire, they would fire at random, terrible uh, flash powers. So like I would have it set for like 1 64th power and then I would press it at a reception and then all of a sudden it would pop a full power blast. 
all kinds of issues. And I just got sick of it because it was ruining great photographs and great moments. And I, I just got, I said, I was sick of it. I said, no more. I was like, I'll pay whatever I need to pay in order for my tools to work for me and not against me. So that's when I found Profoto and I dug into it. it they are basically kind of like the Cadillac of flash gear when it comes to photography. Um, there's a ton of stuff that I love about them. There's some things I don't love about them. They're not perfect, right? But I'm keeping, I, when I ordered them, I kept them, I didn't send them back. Um, and I will tell you for all, for any misgiving that I have, which is few, for any misgiving I have about Profoto, they work, they're consistent. The light output and the light quality is consistent. I can set these, and I have before, on a high, um, uh, high drive uh, on the Sony's and just hold down the camera shutter and just, if I'm doing some kind of fast motion and I'm trying to freeze motion, and these things literally will just pop, 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 no problem at all. Um, and I, I didn't miss a single frame. So um, very, very cool. Uh, so anyway, for the most part, I use the A1 throughout the day. And then I have the uh, B10 for whenever I need just a little bit more power. I do love that this B10 unit is small. It still fits in my bag. Like even literally, even this bag, I can still put it in that bag uh, and carry it around with me on the wedding day. I typically don't because it's a little heavier and I only use this usually for receptions or if I need just a little bit more power. If I'm doing like an afternoon session, uh, portrait session, you know, outside and I, I need this, I need a little bit more power to be able to balance out the sun um, or do something creative with. I've got that with me too. I've also got the Profoto A1 remote to be able to uh, control these things from the top of my camera. Um, so with that being said, I think I've pretty much gone through all of the essential gear that I have with me. Uh, this is everything that I use in order to be the best storyteller that I possibly can. There are a lot of photographers that I talk to about equipment and they, have, they ask me questions. And what I keep coming back to is these items here are just tools. They're things like a hammer is to uh, a carpenter, they're just tools to accomplish a specific end. And so there's a ton of great, like ca camera brands for instance, there's a ton of great, like Canon and Nikon and all those cameras, like they're awesome, there's nothing wrong with them. Sony's not inherently better than anything else. Um, it's just finding the lane that you're comfortable with and then digging in. It's about learning how to craft the image in your head to see the image that you're trying to create and then have the tools needed just to create that image that you have in your head and to tell the best story possible. So if you guys have questions about it, please let me know. I'd love to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, we've also got a Facebook group that we're starting for other creatives. If you're learning how to uh, be a creative storyteller through photo, through film, we'd love to see you there. Come and hang out with us, join us, um, ask questions if you have questions or if you have a comment or a raging concern, you know, come and let us know in the group. We would love to interact with you there and, and get to know you a little bit. So guys, I hope you have a great day, a great week, a great month, and a great year. I'll talk to you soon.